There are hardly any cars returning to Shanghai. You should also document this. On New Year's Eve, the streets of Shanghai are devoid of cars. We were one of only two cars on the road. This lady in the car said, "Nowadays, you can cross the road freely, and there's no one on the buses. Both Shanghai locals and out-of-towners are nowhere to be seen. What's going on? Shanghai during the Lunar New Year resembles a ghost town." The streets of Shanghai are now virtually devoid of pedestrians and vehicles. It's like a ghost town. Shanghai netizens say that Shanghai is experiencing an unprecedented Lunar New Year ghost town. Last year, due to the sudden outbreak of the epidemic, Shanghai turned into a ghost town to prevent the spread of the virus. This year, it's even scarier. Everyone has gone home for the New Year. Look, even the subway is empty. Brothers, the subway is empty. Nobody's riding the subway. Everyone has gone home for the new year. It's tough seeing only a few people in such a big city. This completely subverts the traditional belief that houses should never be empty. With a large number of migrant workers leaving the city to return home, the city center of Shanghai has become less populated, with fewer cars and people on the main roads. Apart from a few local vehicles sparsely scattered on the main roads, there are hardly any out-of-town vehicles to be seen. During the Lunar New Year period, first-tier cities almost always become ghost towns. Many migrant workers choose to return home for the New Year. The phenomenon of ghost towns reflects China's economic imbalance. If a farmer can earn the same income at home as in the city, would they be willing to travel back and forth every year? This lady said, "Only in China do we have the Spring Festival travel rush. There would be no Spring Festival travel rush without a large number of people leaving their hometowns." The Spring Festival travel rush is not about the happiness of going home; it's a migration of suffering. Migrant workers' migration is for supporting their families and making a living. For hundreds of millions of migrant workers and laborers, it's a difficult journey filled with bitterness. It's a journey where having a job means no home, and having a home means no job. They cannot find a place for their souls in a strange land, and their hometowns cannot accommodate their bodies. A place called home cannot provide a way to support their families, and a place where they can support their families cannot be called home. Thus, they become wanderers, and thus the Spring Festival travel rush begins. In recent years, China's economic downturn and the internationalization of metropolises have led to Shanghai also becoming desolate. With a large amount of foreign capital withdrawing, Shanghai has become a ghost town, especially during the New Year. It becomes even more desolate and quiet. Middle-class citizens of Shanghai express that many shops have closed down, and the market is in a mess. Even tourism can only be done on a budget. The prosperous areas of Shanghai have become ghost towns, and the real estate industry has hit a dead end. Miss Sun said, "The economy is very bad now, and even Shanghai is in a slump. If you go to Lujiazui, Shanghai's famous commercial center, you'll see how deserted it is. The bustling Plaza 66 is now deserted." The shopping centers near the Himalayas on the other side of Little Lujiazui used to be lively, but now they are almost like ghost towns. What can be done about it? How can real estate be developed? Real estate was supposed to sell houses, but now I can't. So I go into holding properties and I go into operations, but that's not working either. Talking about the prospects of commercial real estate, Ms. Sun believes it's not optimistic. People have no money, and consumption is declining. Now, if you go to the Raffles City, it's basically a place for buying luxury goods. Before, business was booming, and the annual growth rate was good, but last year's data was dismal. Chinese people used to buy luxury goods or high-end skincare products, but now they don't have money and are buying domestic goods. What impresses ordinary people the most is that they don't even stay at international five-star hotels now, or the prices of five-star hotels have dropped to the level of unimaginable state-owned hotels, or to the level of Chinese domestic brands. The prices of local brands are the same, and people have no money. If you want to promote real estate development, you have to let people make money, make more money, and then they will buy houses. He said, "Now the unemployment rate is so high, you know." 
during the New Year holiday, if you can still find a seat on the Shanghai subway, what does that mean? During the New Year in Shanghai, there are no cars on the elevated roads. It's completely empty up there. This is the best time for city work. Many people have already left. They have all evacuated. So how can you do consumer circulation? You can't circulate internally, and you can't circulate externally, right? So you can only wait for the news. How can ordinary people do when you make them wait? They can only wait for the news. Let us show you the current situation in Dongguan. There's nobody here. I've taken over the whole city. Now the whole of Dongguan is mine. It's all mine. Netizens say that during the New Year, come out and see the situation outside of Dongguan, Guangdong. At this moment, during normal times, it's the busiest time for the night market. As the New Year approaches, everything becomes quiet. This is Shijie Town in Dongguan. Walking on the streets at this moment, there are very few people, and many stores have closed and gone home for the New Year. It's hard to find a restaurant to eat in, and there are also fewer cars parked on both sides of the street. At this moment, the night market is also very dim, with only a few lights left here for the New Year. Without buying a set of cooking tools for yourself, I'm afraid you can only eat instant noodles during the New Year. Walking on the residential streets, even the lights are dimmer. The big stalls here are also closed early on another street. This is a commercial street near the entrance of a factory in Dongguan. It's a relatively large factory in Dongguan, and now let's take a look at the situation at the factory gate to see if there are any restaurants still open here. This is a row of commercial streets at the factory gate. Usually, there are a lot of people here, and each store is crowded with people. At this moment. It's also very deserted, and most of the stores have closed and gone home. Walking on this street, there are hardly any people. The neon lights that are usually bright at the night market are now dim. Walking on the streets of Guangdong at this moment, one can taste the loneliness. Although the weather is still quite good, but it's really cold. Looking at the tall buildings, not a single light can be seen. Walking on the streets, you can't hear any bustling noises. And you can't find a restaurant when you go out. This is Guangdong during the New Year. Look, this is the real situation of Dongguan during the New Year. Many shops have already closed and gone home. It's the New Year, and the shops here are the same. Going all the way down, most of them have already closed and gone home. Look at those across the street. Shops. Guangzhou's New Year has also entered a ghost town mode. There are few pedestrians on the streets. No more traffic and no hustle and bustle of people coming and going. More of it is desolation, and Guangzhou's prosperity relies on the support of outsiders. Every year during the Spring Festival, outsiders return home, leaving behind deserted roads. Fewer people, shops closed, and it's very desolate. A lady from Shanghai said, "It's around 8:30 in the morning on the 29th of the lunar month, and I'm on my way to work. It's almost New Year's Eve." And the road is too quiet. There are hardly any pedestrians, and occasionally one or two cars pass by. This is the first subway ride I take every day, and the subway station is particularly empty. This is the road I take to work after getting off the subway. In the past few years, the roads were congested with people and vehicles every day, but look at it now. There are hardly any pedestrians today. There are hardly any cars either. An elderly person who came to the supermarket to shop said, "The economy is not good anymore, and the workers have all gone back to their hometowns for the new year. After the epidemic three years ago, the number of people in Shanghai has significantly decreased. This is on the subway home at night. The entire carriage is empty. There's no one here. Today's supermarket turnover is also the lowest since I started working." This lady said, "During the new year, the supermarkets are usually the busiest these days." Families of all sizes go to the supermarket, and it's almost packed with people. It takes a long time to check out, and there are also stalls selling firecrackers and cutlets on the streets. Some small supermarkets will display frozen goods outside for sale. After the 23rd of the lunar month, every household starts to get busy cleaning, preparing New Year goods, and the New Year atmosphere gradually becomes stronger. Now it's deserted. Look. This is Line Two that runs through Shanghai from east to west, and there are hardly any people. It's particularly deserted. It's only a little past nine o'clock on my way home, and there's not a single pedestrian. 
It feels like celebrating the new year in Shanghai is really meaningless. There's not even a hint of new year atmosphere. Mr. Wang Zhongming, who owns multiple properties in Shanghai, told the media that most of the storefronts outside are closed now, especially in downtown areas such as the bars on Zintiandi and Huashan Road in Shanghai, as well as the cafes and bars on Yuyuan Road. Over the past few years, large-scale shopping malls have been developed, and they are now closing on a large scale, with only two or three still open. The department stores downstairs of New World Shopping Mall, across from a shop in the northeast, are basically empty, and various weird shops are now closed. He said many of them were opened by foreigners, but many have closed down, and they have become Chinese-owned. Mr. Wang also mentioned that Shanghai New Passenger Station, also known as Shanghai Railway Station, has a large number of small shops nearby, most of which have closed. He introduced that the owners of these small shops are Shanghai locals. And most of the sales staff were young people from out of town. Public information shows that Shanghai's well-known Pacific Department Store in Suwei District has exited the Shanghai market. The mall has been in operation for 30 years since it opened in 1993, with a total area of nearly 30,000 square meters. Before this store closed, the Pacific Department Store, Huaihai Road Store, and the Nocturnal City Store had also closed. It's really a mess. He said that now the market isn't a mess, and he has never seen Shanghai like this before. Neither high-end nor mid-range nor low-end can survive. Mr. Wang learned that in some places where high-end restaurants gather, such as Nanjing East Road Pedestrian Street and Bun Number、no. One and Number、no. Eight, they are also struggling. Mr. Wang said, "In the past, everyone fought to rent storefronts in Fengxian District, but now the storefronts cannot be rented out, and ordinary people have no money. As a middle class." Mr. Wang said, "Now even traveling has become budget traveling for us." He said, "A group of retired elderly people around me used to go to Kunming to escape the summer every August, but now they can only stay in hotels that cost 30 yuan a night. Places that used to cost thousands of yuan to visit have no visitors. The empty skyscrapers, sparsely populated shopping centers, and deserted highways with numerous unfinished construction sites paint a bleak picture of Shenzhen, Shanghai." Once hoped to become the little Hong Kong of mainland China, but now plunged into economic depression. This is another unfinished project, personally deployed by the top leaders of the Chinese Communist Party. Property prices in Shanghai plummeted from 130,000 to 30,000 yuan per square meter, with no takers and no interest. The initial investment in Shanghai was 45 billion dollars, with official media calling it the future international technology and financial center of mainland China. Positioned strategically to leverage Hong Kong's services for the mainland and the world. However, the reality is far from the initial hype. Shanghai, often described as the special zone within the special zone of Shenzhen, saw personal involvement from the top leadership, including three visits by the Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping himself. Yet, the prime office rents in Shenzhen have plummeted to levels seen a decade ago. Shanghai's office vacancy rates are at their highest. With entire floors left unoccupied, it's a desolate landscape, with developers struggling to attract tenants despite offering competitive prices. The situation is dire for property owners. Shanghai's Shenzhen Financial Building went under the hammer 13 times in four years, with prices dropping from 24.96 million to 8.33 million yuan, a staggering 66 percent decrease. Yet there are still no takers. Resulting in significant losses for property owners who directly lose two properties. Shanghai's office market is now in shambles, with listed prices in residential areas like Meiyuan Temple plummeting to around 95,700 yuan per square meter, down from previous highs of 170,000 to 180,000 yuan per square meter. Foxconn's operations came under government scrutiny. I'm currently in the Liangcheng area of the Shanghai zone. It's 7 p.m. The peak rush hour, but there's a significant decrease in people compared to before. Previously, it used to be packed with employees, with some working over 100 hours of overtime in October. But now, there's hardly any overtime work in November. It's a significant impact on ordinary workers like us. It's 7:11 p.m. now, and during peak hours, there are only four buses, all of them full. It's incomparable to before, when this place used to be packed with employees during rush hours. Even the peak hours for tricycle taxis are affected. Tricycle drivers are calling out fares of two yuan per ride. 
Yesterday, on the 15th, another large batch of people left, and there's still no policy to retain employees. You think it won't have an impact? If Foxconn really moves out, how much will it affect Hanan? How much will it affect us, the workers? Some Foxconn employees say that when their contracts end, and they become unemployed, with only two months left until the new year, where will they transition to? Isn't it terrifying? Will there be another company for us to work for? Someone asked if there will be another one. But who would it be? Nobody knows. Recently, Shandong Shulang Clothing Factory officially declared bankruptcy due to inability to repay its debts, leaving tens of thousands of employees jobless. One employee said, I saw on TikTok that Shulang went bankrupt, so I hurried here, thinking of spending my stored value card before it's too late. But now, I can't use it anymore. They're already in bankruptcy liquidation. If you come here, you have to fill out a debt repayment form and bring your ID card and stored value card, and they'll guide you through the process. Because the company is in such a dire situation, today, I was informed by HR that I'm being laid off. Sigh, I'm also being laid off along with many others. Most of my colleagues have already left. Yeah, I've been laid off, and suddenly, I don't know what to do next. Honestly, I've been thinking about this on my way home from work, but no matter how much I think about it, the ultimate result is that I've been laid off. I have to accept this reality. It's really disorienting, I don't know what to do next.